Occupational English test. Practice test two. Listening test. This test has three parts. In each part, you'll hear a number of different extracts. At the start of each extract, you will hear this sound. You will have time to read the questions before you hear each extract, and you will hear each extract once only. Complete your answers as you listen. At the end of the test, you will have two minutes to check your answers. Part A. In this part of the test, you will hear two different extracts. In each extract, a health professional is talking to a patient. For questions one to twenty-four. Complete the notes with the information you hear. Now, look at the notes for extract one. Extract one, questions one to twelve. You hear a cardiologist talking to a patient called Jessica Saunders. For questions one to twelve. Complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have thirty seconds to look at the notes. Hello, Mrs. Sanders. I'm the doctor in charge. I just wanted to let you know what's happened and answer any questions you may have. What is cyanosis? Is it an infection? Not quite. Cyanosis refers to a bluish colour to the skin and the mucous membranes. Peripheral cyanosis is when there is a bluish discoloration to the hands or feet. It's usually caused by low oxygen levels in the red blood cells or problems getting oxygenated blood to the body. You see, blood that's rich in oxygen is the bright red colour that you usually associate with blood. When blood has a lower level of oxygen and becomes darker red, bluer light is reflected, making the skin appear to have a blue tint. My baby has that. One of the medics did a hypoxia test to see if the PaO2 would rise or something, and she said it failed to rise, which means the bluish colour is probably due to a cyanotic heart disease. Yes, that's correct. We have determined that this is probably the case. How much do you know about your baby's condition? Just that her lips were blue, and it was probably due to a cyanotic heart disease. That's all. Okay. Well, firstly, let me reassure you that we are taking very, very good care of her.、Uh, we've treated your baby as an emergency case, as we should. We've already started the emergency treatment, and I'm here to update you. I have reviewed your baby's X-rays, and I can see abnormal positioning of the two main blood vessels. Thus, it's likely that your baby has what's known as a transposition of the great arteries. Do you know what that is? No. Can you tell me what it is? Transposition of the great arteries is a serious condition where the two main blood vessels leaving the heart, the pulmonary artery which carries blood to the lungs to absorb oxygen. And the aorta, which takes blood from the heart to the body, are swapped over. That's to say, the pulmonary artery is joined to the left pumping chamber, and the aorta to the right pumping chamber. This means that blood flows to the lungs and picks up oxygen, but is then pumped back to the lungs instead of travelling around the body. Blood flowing around the body is unable to reach the lungs to pick up oxygen and continues circulating. So. Because they're in the wrong way around, she's not getting enough oxygen to her body. She is getting some oxygen thanks to another blood vessel、um, connecting the main pulmonary artery to the aorta, but this is not enough. That's why she looks cyanotic or, or blue. How common is this? Transposition of the great arteries accounts for up to five percent of congenital heart disease, and it's the most common、uh, cardiological cause of cyanosis in newborns.
And how was it being treated? We started a prostaglandin medicine to keep the ducts open because it closes naturally after birth. We will also need to do a balloon atrial septostomy, which is a surgical procedure in which a small hole is created between the upper two chambers of the heart, the atria. This will improve the mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood at the atrial level, but ultimately an atrial switch operation will need to be performed to provide a definitive correction. But one of your doctor colleagues listened to her art and said that there were no murmurs. And I wanted to ask what that is, but they were gone by the time I could. Murmurs? Well, that's that sound, that whooshing or swishing sound. They can be harmless or innocent. Um, harmless murmurs may not cause symptoms um, and can happen when blood flows more rapidly than normal. Extract 2. Questions 13 to 24. You hear a dentist talking to a patient called Chrissy White. For questions 13 to 24, complete the notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. What brings you here today, Chrissy? Extreme pain. <laughs> it's not that bad, is it? It started with a numbing pain a few months back. I didn't think much of it, and in fact, when I came back here then, the dentist sent me away with a bit of penicillin. Yes, I did see that x-ray from the visit. It's a shame the antibiotics didn't do the trick. No, and now the pain's flaring up again. What causes it? Anything and everything, it seems. It's mainly when I drink something hot, but it also happens if I eat something cold, like ice cream. I see. What type of pain is it? Like a sharp pain all over my teeth. Oh dear. With it being a wisdom tooth, it seems that we may have to look at taking it out. Take it out? I'd rather have a filling if possible, and not one of those metal ones. Silver amalgam? Yeah, not one of those. The ones that look tooth-like. Ordinarily, it is possible to have composite resin filling. How does that work? Well, I would need to use a local anaesthetic to numb the area around your tube. Then I'd use one of those air abrasion instruments over there to remove the decay. After that, the area needs to be cleaned of any bacteria and debris so that I can see if the decay has reached the root. We've got to protect the nerve, you see. But when there's enough of a space, I can then add the filling. A little bit of a finish and polish and we're done. That doesn't sound too bad at all. It's not. I really am very good at the procedure. It's one of the first dental procedures that I learned. But in all honesty, Chrissy, it'd only be a matter of time before you're back here again and in even more pain. So then, what do you suggest? I'm afraid I will still think extraction is the best option. An extraction? Oh, now I'm starting to feel woozy. Oh, don't worry. It's not as major as it sounds. Just like the filling, it's all under the local anaesthetic. Will it hurt? You'd feel a little pinch when the needle goes into your gum and before the anaesthetic kicks in, but that's about it. I'd make sure to numb the tissues surrounding your molar too. I'll even make sure to do some tests around your gums to make sure it's working before we start anything. Thanks. And then? Well, then I have to expand your tooth socket. I'll rock it back and forth so that the bone around it compresses and the socket widens. All of this makes it easier to extract. Would it pop out easily then? Relatively so, with a little help from the pliers. What goes in its place afterwards? Don't tell me I'm going to have a big gaping hole at the back of my mouth. After a few weeks, it's likely the swelling will heal over straight after the procedure. However, it should feel tender. What about straight after? What happens when the anaesthetics wear off? Can you prescribe me some painkillers? Of course. What do you do for work? I'm a receptionist then I'd recommend taking some time off. Sweet. Although bear in mind that eating may be a little difficult after the procedure, but only for a few days or so. While you're waiting for the tooth to heal, we've compiled a list of food suggestions for you. 
anything that's not absolutely rancid. <laughs> There's pudding, gelato, mashed potatoes, scrambled eggs. Not bad. A bit of sorbet or yogurt too. Hmm, this may not be so bad after all.